Hello everyone and welcome to our March Madness Tournament Bracket. We are, th at the end of this video, we'll be halfway through the first round, so we're pushing through these kind of nicely. We have an intense a Nintendo 64 matchup at the moment. Paper Mario, the, a staple RPG. It was Nintendo's real second go at a Nintendo Mario-based RPG outside of Super Mario RPG. Uh, most people would probably say Paper Mario is a lot better, at least I think we all would. Um, it was beautiful, the graphics were awesome, great incredible game that set the stage for some awesome Paper Mario games in the future. And then there's Diddy Kong Racing, which was different than Super Mario Kart <laughs> and Mario Kart 64, but it had an incredible story mode that I think in terms of the single player experience, blows out pretty much every racing game out there. It's iconic, with iconic characters in it. Um, as much as it seems like it'd be obvious for someone like me who likes to give Nick crap for Diddy Kong Racing, yep. um, I've played the game a lot recently and I kind of enjoy it and this is a little bit Isn't closer. it good? It I told really you it was fun. good! Well, and it, I think it's especially fun because I play by myself, which you yep. would think would make a kart racing game extremely boring, but I've liked the experience so far. I, I the like variety The variety in Diddy Kong Racing is so good, especially with those, even though I didn't like them as a kid, but those eight silver coin missions, they actually make it pretty interesting. Yeah, well, and the fact that each, like, there's different gimmicks and there's different associations with each level and the way, like, having, like, boss fights and all the single player stuff and all the extra modes, like, it's a very witty idea, I feel like, for a game, just a, a Nintendo racing game, you know? So I, I'll just I'll just put it like this. Single player modes in these games are so dang hard to compare. I think that I'm gonna try to stick to comparing those because multiplayer Paper Mario doesn't really freaking have. But in terms, yes, in terms of the racing, in terms of the racer of Diddy Kong Racing, the single player is just so damn good. But I do have to ding it for certain care. If you play as Pipsy, you're gonna have so much harder of a time than anybody else in that game, and that's what's frustrating. Diddy Kong Racing, in terms of trying to make an, a good cast of racers. That's where they failed on, and that's one of the things I do have to ding it on. But, I mean, not every racing game is going to be perfectly balanced, obviously, but I do have to ding it on that, because if you try to beat the uh, person from the Octopus world as Pipsy, you're going to be there for a long freaking time before you progress. Well, so you got to pick somebody... Sorry? No, so I, I would argue then, so you say that's a bad thing, and I could see that, but could that also be a good thing in the sense that if you play with a character like that, it gives you a completely different gaming experience? Which might allow nope, for more because you're going to be struggling against those guys anyway. And I, again, I've replayed this game, I would say, like maybe in the last six months or so. Um, and I was still having trouble with a couple with a couple of the bosses. It's not like, it's not, yes, you can speed run it. It's not like too easy of a game. But there are broken races, like TT the Clock is easily the best racer in the game, no, no doubt about it. But I will say in terms of like single player, it's it really depends on what you're kind of feeling for the day. Paper Mario, it's, well, both of these games are very, very funny. Both of the musics for these games are some of my favorites on the N64. Yeah. This is why, oh god, this one's gonna freaking hurt because musically, like gameplay-wise, almost everything about them is perfect. Paper Mario takes a oh, normal, I'm talking really fast, I'm sorry, there's so much <laughs> to say. Paper Mario takes a normal turn-based battling system, brings in action elements and keeps you engaged, and also paves the way for Thousand Year Door, which is so damn good. And Diddy Kong Racing paves the way for nothing. And I, I, I can't dig it on that though. Oh, t t tell me a negative about one of them, please. I need to have something. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing um, sucks when you're playing against someone who knows exactly what they're doing because you're gonna get last place and you just feel awful about yourself. Whereas the other person's like, come on, this is a great game. There's no com. That is one thing that you can't dig it on. There's not really a huge comeback factor that you can have with Diddy Kong. Absolutely Racing. nothing. As the items are useless. Yeah, it's definitely not. If you know how to use them. They that's actually a big part. In Mario Kart 64 and like other game, other racing games around the same time, items meant certain things and you can use them to, to benefit. Diddy Kong Racing, there's a lot of items are just completely useless. Well, That I is think something you can dig it against them. That's negatives for both, I would almost argue, in opposite ways. Diddy Kong Racing, I think, is harder for casual players to get into compared to other racing games like Mario Kart. But Paper Mario is extremely easy in that same regard. I don't. Th I think I beat the whole game without dying once in it. Um, yeah. It doesn't require a lot of in-depth thinking or using like status effects on enemies the way that like more advanced RPGs do. I think it's really easy to beat with just basic attacks and defending. Um, so I think that game doesn't appeal to like expert level 
turn-based RPG gamers. You know, I think it's ba it's an entry-level game that might not appeal to that more advanced audience. So I think they almost, despite both being cartoonish, I think they kind of appeal to different audiences in a way. Diddy Kong Racing, I will say, has a lot, has a lot bigger of a learning curve. If you're talking about Paper Mario games, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door does have a good learning curve, and it does take the combat in a little more of an advanced direction, if you want to say it like that. I want to say, though, that as much as I hate to say it, Diddy, or as much as I hate to like ding Mario Kart 64 on it, but like I'm pretty sure Diddy Kong Racing was like the first game, was like the first or one of the first racing games that was actually like, truly 3D. Because I'm pretty sure Mario 64 only had 2D sprites. I don't think they had 3D models. Oh, so that's one of the crazy know. things about it. And so Diddy Kong Racing, I'm pretty sure had 3D models for that. I do want to say though, in terms of going out of your way and exploring a Diddy Kong Racing, you are rewarded immensely for that you'll either find like balloons hiding behind a tree you'll find the keys to do the battle stages and whatnot to unlock the time to unlock certain uh, trials in the game that is one thing that paper mario does not have as much yeah you have like certain games that you can find and thousand year door does it better with the uh bulletin board of all the quests that you can do but diddy kong racing i would say like in terms of exploration wise i think diddy kong racing does it better it's which is crazy to say for a freaking racing game with a hub world but yeah interesting um well, we've kind of got our opinions out there. Do we want to vote? Yeah. Well, I'll start with the voting. Um, I, I love both these games. It, it's hard. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing, I think, is the best kart racing game on the Nintendo 64. <coughs> I think it's better than Mario Kart 64. Um, I agree. But I, a Thousand Year Door is one of my favorite games of all time. Paper Mario, despite being way older, wasn't that much lower down in terms of what it offered. Um, it definitely did You get some upgrades with Thousand Year Door, but... Paper Mario, for what it was on, there's not a whole lot I would have liked to add, honestly. So I think my vote's going to go Paper Mario. I'd have to say... Wait, you said Paper Mario? Yeah. Okay. I'd have to say... Oh, it's going to hurt me to say it. I don't even remember which one I put it for like my best 64 games. But I, I'm <laughs> going to have to vote with the same metric that I had before on what was more like of the of the goal, like of the concise goal that I tried to achieve. Uh, sorry, Travis, to make you have to be the tiebreaker. I have to say Diddy Kong Racing. Damn. I, I hate to I hate to do it because I don't have as much to stand on. But the only thing that's edging it out is the exploration part, and that is one thing that if you're on your own and you're and you're playing it on your own, I think Paper Mario is a great freaking game, and it's all the way up there. But Diddy Kong Racing is just a game that will never get old in that aspect. It'll never get. It takes a game with such short tracks and is able to bring it into such a bigger game. And fighting was big as fun. All right, Travis, it's up to you. Oh, boy. So as much as I like to hate on this game, I'll also go Diddy Kong Racing just because it Damn. does it does provide you with, like, a different way of racing than just normal. You're in a cart, because then you'll also go in an airplane, and then I guess there's also a ton of adventuring, which I had no idea. Maybe that's what I was trying Diddy to Kong do, Nick. I was just trying to adventure. <laughs> I meant to go out in the ocean. Nothing Actually, one of the keys is out there, so it's not a bad idea. <laughs> um, so it just like it does it bring brings, a lot of variety. Yeah. Racing. Whereas Paper Mario, like you were saying, it's a very simplistic game. Like it obviously paved the way to some great games. Like I haven't personally played many of the Paper Marios. I've actually only had experience with Color Splash, which is I know <laughs> ah, God. not as great of a. Sorry, go on. The first <laughs> or the second. Right? You just oh. shut Travis up. Right? Right? It's I'm just sorry. one and two. I didn't are mean the, that. Are the, the, the goats of the series. Because I feel like they kind of transitioned Paper Mario into the Mario and Luigi games. Yeah. When it comes into, like... Yeah, Mario and um, Luigi became more of an action-adventure platformer kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mario and Luigi became the RPGs. So, screw Nintendo for that. Anyway, yeah. let's keep going. All right, so Diddy Kong Racing is moving on. Who will I it compete like against? This one. Yeah, these games are very similar. It's going to be hard to compare them because they're just so alike. That's uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, Battle for Bikini Bottom, and Outlast. You know, uh, both survival horror games in their own specific ways. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, Battle for Bikini Bottom, not a very popular game, but it has an extremely, extremely committed cult following. Nick is one of those people. Um, I am. He is it's a very, But it's, it's a very impressive game. Uh, platforming game. I think it's honestly one of the best platforming games on the Nintendo GameCube. Uh, it did a great job for being a game based on a TV show. Usually those are pretty awful. This one wasn't. It did a great job and people love it for that. Outlast I think is the textbook horror game in terms of not having weapons and trying to survive. Such a so, horror game. Again, very different games. Travis is I passionate like about one. I did like watching Outlast. 
Yeah, Travis is passionate about one, Nick's passionate about the other. Uh, very different, and let's see what happens. Travis, you want to start or you want me to? Um, I could start. So, Outlast is one of my top five games of all time because it's just... I have played it through maybe ten times, if not more. Um, each one going in with a different mindset. One was just, obviously, just to play through it, and it was, you know, terrifying because... The atmosphere is so good in it, um, which they definitely improved on in the second one because um, eventually we, me and Mike thought it would be a great idea to just race the game and we were literally just <laughs> sprinting down the halls, not even caring about Christopher or the bat guy or anybody chasing us because we know they're yeah. having. So we could either just not get detected at all, which is kind of sad when you're sprinting down a hall, and then... Once you kind of know where to go, it kind of loses its falter. But, like, the first time you play that game, like, you're too scared to even move out of the door to even, like, learn their actual pathing. Because you're just hiding in the locker and you're hearing him breathe and you're like, nope, I'm going to die for sure. And then the music is always so on point. Once you get caught, you're like, oh, I am, my heart is now racing. I have no idea where this person is, but he knows where I am. So I'm just going to run, and then usually you run into the guy, and you get stabbed because, you know, horror games are great. <laughs> SpongeBob does not I'm have gonna, this. I'm going to put it like this. Both of these games have a more niche audience, if anything. I would say SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom is for people like me, who grew up watching SpongeBob, and wanted to run around and explore what Bikini Bottom looked like, and it did that with flying colors. Yes, it is a glitchy game, I'm not saying otherwise. And Outlast, I will also say to its credit, uh, because survival horror, or I would say maybe it's not as much of a niche audience, but I would say it's a very specific audience that the game was made for, and I will say that it was done very well. One thing I do have to say that I think SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom had better than Outlast is I didn't, uh, maybe, and again, please correct me for this because I haven't played a lot of uh, survival horror games, I didn't really see how it would distance itself from the other games that are like it. I see a lot of those games as very similar, and again, this is coming from somebody outside of the genre that these games are made for, but SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom seems a lot more unique and has a lot more, what I would think, character than Outlast. And I want to hear your debates because I'm probably way off with that. Well, well <laughs> Outlast, the biggest thing is that you don't have a weapon to protect yourself. So, mm -hmm. like, um, for instance, when I was playing the Resident Evil... I, don't, I forgot which one I was playing. The, the newest seven. one. Yeah, Seven. Like, I have a pistol, so, like... It's a really creepy atmosphere, for sure, but, like, it's not the same as, like, I have literally nothing. Like, I have to be stealthy, otherwise I will die. Whereas any of the other horror games usually have something that you can kind of defend yourself in. Because even in, like, um, what's the picture one where you take a picture? Fatal Frame? Fatal Frame, yeah. Yeah. Um, you still have, like, the camera, so you can kind of stun the ghosts before they actually get to you, so... Like, it has its own little unique thing, but it's still, like, a defense mechanism. So as long as you have that, like, by your side. Whereas Outlast, your only saving grace is if you have a battery and that com uh, video camera to actually see. Because I, okay. I have gotten it where I had no batteries and I was in the sewer where it's basically pitch black. And all I hear is Christopher walking in the water. And I'm like, I have zero idea where you are and then the intense music happens and i'm like oh good and and well you can just guess how that went um i will say for originality's sake i think outlast does beat battle for bikini bottom because spongebob yes you basically reuse assets boss fights though were always fun i would say like in the way the game was designed it's designed very well always mixing up the boss fights always progressing progressing on especially the robot patrick boss fight and the robot spongebob boss fight i thought i thought was fantastic um also with Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, it takes, I would say both these games play off a different thing. But Battle for Bikini Bottom plays on that kind of like childlike whimsicality that you would have while play, while, while you were watching your Saturday morning cartoons. And Outlast does kind of the opposite. It, it plays on that. Off. It plays on that, it, it wants to scare your pants off. It wants to play to your heart racing and it wants, you to, it wants to shock you in every possible way it can. I think it does a good job for it. I guess I'll have to go with the same metrics that I have for the other ones, which one which one achieves their goal better? I know Travis is probably voting for Outlast, so I'm just going to save everybody the chance. I'm voting Outlast, too. Yeah, well, I was going to vote Outlast, too, so Outlast <laughs> wins, <laughs> I guess. 
Yeah, because I don't want to hate on SpongeBob because it definitely is really fun and obviously completely different. Uh, it did its job better. It, it, That's all it was for me. There's other there's other funny 3D platformers that are out there like Banjo Kazooie. I as much as I love SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, I would still say it's probably up there for like top 15 games for me. It doesn't do too much different that makes me want to say that it's a better game than something that's more that's that's like Outlast that is more original. Yeah, but like I did say, Outlast 2 definitely did improve the different things to make it even scarier, like the random or randomizing their pathing because oh my god, some of those parts I was I just could not get through. <laughs> All right, that does it. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.